Well, for former astronaut Buzz Aldrin, there was one clear early sign that he was destined for greatness among the stars. His mother's maiden name was Marion Moon. Buzz completed the world's first successful spacewalk before later being part of a mission that would captivate the entire world. Apollo 11. 2014 marks the 45th anniversary of his and Neil Armstrong's historic moonwalk, where they became the first two people to ever set foot on another celestial body. Well, Buzz has accomplished much since Apollo 11, including devising a patent for reusable rockets, receiving the U.S. Congressional Medal, and even having Toy Story's Buzz Lightyear named after him. Well, I had the privilege of an exclusive one-on-one -on -one sit down with Dr. Aldrin at Abu Dhabi's Global Aerospace Summit. We estimated, as the three of us on the crew, that we maybe had 60% chance of being able to successfully land a switch. And the landing gear sent a message and lit a little light in front of me. Uh, and Neil couldn't see it. And the ground back in Houston couldn't see it right away. Uh, so I said, contact light. Tranquility Base, the Eagle has landed. When there was a spare moment, and maybe it was 10 seconds after we touched down or whatever, we looked at each other, okay? There wasn't a camera on us. Uh, I remember patting Neil on the back. He says we shook hands. I don't know what happened. But that moment was uh, really, uh, for both of us, the most important. There's only one person there. All he had to do, according to the president, was to land, get the camera, take a few pictures, push the go button and go back home. I yeah. wanted to talk a little bit about, uh, obviously, your more current role as a space ambassador. Mm -hmm. uh, you have some very interesting viewpoints I, on I the future. I like that term. A space Unfortunately, ambassador. Unfortunately, I can't convince the State Department Oh, to officially use it? That for <laughs> the American people to be reminded that 24 people living or deceased should be called really, not just honorary, lunar ambassadors. It would help in our country. It would help in parts of the world. The first Chinaman, Chinese person in orbit, I know him. We talked for a good while. He's the head of the Chinese... Uh, human spaceflight program. What am I ahead of? <laughs> well, I, I mean, I I'd guess... I'd like to be <laughs> <laughs> talking to him and say, hey, look, I'm, I'm a lunar ambassador. I'm a global space statesman. Well, I mean, I'm I, think, I think maybe because of that, I know you're quite an advocate of, uh, of having private companies involved in developing space flight and mm -hmm. helping you know, develop uh, space exploration as well. Why do you think that's so important? Is it the case that you know, sort of the national, the era of the national space program. Do you think that's dying out? Is it more about private companies to take the, the research, take the exploration forward? The countries rise and they fall. Look at history. There are reasons why they go up and, and they come down. Uh, I'm not going to be able to fix that but I can help with the spirit of pride and the spirit of achievement and not lose what many have worked very hard to do, and that's to be leaders in space exploration. Keep motivating people, keep doing things, climb to the top of the mountain to see what's on the other side. That's innate in, in being a human being. You're also an advocate of um, you know, colonizing Mars, this idea that eventually at some point, you know, for the continuance of the human race, we'll need to look at options like that. Why do you think that's so important? I know that in your book you were saying that you thought it would be possible by 2035. Um, tell me more about that. Uh, human beings absolutely will be on Mars permanently. Okay. Uh, why not us? Why not me? Why not somebody else? Why not a group of people? So you think it's inevitable that this will... Absolutely it's inevitable. 
And why do you yeah. think that? Because Mars is there. We know how far away it is. And we've sent robots there. I would love to know, you know, kind of looking into the future, what you really hope and believe your enduring legacy will be. Uh, a future, a futurist who did his most in uh, the talents that he has uh, for the future of his country.